Welcome to the 12th video in the series MVMED Unfolded, a complete guide to the MVMED software. In the last video, we finished our explanation of the program Albero. In this video, we will begin to explain the MVMED program spaces and the important settings that allow us to create an MVMED model area. To access the spaces program, simply open the MVMED headquarter. Spaces should be the second program listed under the MVMED tab. Once Spaces is open, we can see a 2D grid where we can create an MVMED model area from scratch. But before we start creating a model area, we need to understand the available settings and functions that Spaces offers. The first thing we need to do is click on the Edit Area slash Create New Area button. Within the new window that appears, we have a variety of settings we can change in regards to our model area. The first parameter that can be set is the geolocation of our model area. We can either set this information manually or click on the Find Location button in order to use a search engine to find our location for us. Once we have set our location, we need to set the geometry of our model area under the Model Geometry tab. In this window, we can set the size of our model area in each direction – x, y and z. We can also set the resolution size of our grid cells here. For example, if we want to have a model area that is 400 meters by 400 meters with a height of 80 meters and each cell is set to the default resolution value of 2 meters, we would then have a model area consisting of 200 by 200 by 40 grids. In order to calculate more precise values at the pedestrian level, we can choose to select this setting here. This action splits the lowest grid cells into 5 individual parts, giving us more precise and accurate results. This splitting is only really necessary for model areas which have a grid cell resolution of 2 meters or greater. If we are simulating an area with a 1 meter grid cell resolution, then splitting is not crucial. When constructing a model area, there are a few important rules that need to be followed. For one, we must always have some space between our buildings and the edge of our model area. As a rule of thumb, the distance between the border and the buildings should be at least the size of the closest building height. The next important rule is to ensure that our model area is adequately sized relative to the tallest building. Ideally, it should be at least double the height of the tallest structure. This is where telescoping comes into play. This feature helps to extend the model area vertically without processing unnecessary empty grid cells above the buildings in our model. For instance, if our tallest building is 40 meters high, our model area should be a minimum of 80 meters in height, or 40 grid cells. However, too many grids in the Z direction can lead to increased processing time. By adjusting the telescoping setting, such as setting the factor to 20% and starting height at 45 meters, each grid above 45 meters will be elongated in the Z direction by 20%. It is crucial to initiate telescoping above the tallest object in our model area to ensure accurate modeling. If we do not, the objects will become stretched, leading to unrealistic results. Always remember to click Apply Changes to Existing Area anytime any changes are made. A very useful window offered in Spaces can be found under the Edit tab at the top of the screen. The button here, called Model Inspector, opens a window with detailed information regarding our model area. Under the area entitled Vertical, we can see all of our Z-grid cells and their respective heights in meters. This is very helpful to look at when using telescoping, as we can see how much of an effect our telescoping has had on the total model height. With our current telescoping settings, we can see that our model area is now unnecessarily high. We can either reduce the telescoping factor or reduce the total number of secrets in order to achieve a height of around 80 meters. The dialogues that appear here can be very useful as they change depending on the current settings of our model area and let us know what we need to change in order for our model area to be viable. Now that we have our model area set up, we are ready to start constructing buildings. Therefore, stay tuned for the next video, where we will explain how to place buildings, apply materials and use the 3D view.